Hi, welcome to Chat and Craft with Lorraine. I'm Lorraine Tierney and I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator from Warner, New Hampshire. And I love to make cards. I love to share cards with people. And I am hopping on tonight to show you a tent fun fold. It's really, really easy. And um, it's super nice because of the way it displays and stands up and um, there's lots to decorate with it. So um, I'm going to show you a couple of cards that I made already and then we'll make one together. If you're watching tonight, please say hello. Let me know that you are here. Um, if you comment and share the video, uh, comment or share, I will enter you to win a prize in a few days. I'll randomly pick a winner. So I'd love to know that you're watching or catching the replay. And thanks so much for joining me. All right, I'm gonna switch the camera. Here we go. And let me just move this over a little bit. Okay, so let me show you a couple of the other cards I made. So here is one. So it looks like a regular uh, card that would open from the bottom, but it is a tent fold. And so it stands up really nicely. Um, so this one I decorated with the, I don't know the name of it, Little Dreamers stamp set. Um, and some wild wheat dots in color dots and then you would put your sentiment and sign your name on the back of it because it doesn't open up with that kind of a base on it but it stands really really nicely hello do i pronounce your name ninfa ninfa you'll have to help me if i'm not pronouncing it correctly but hello ninfa and then this is um, another one that I did. So this is also a tent fold. Um, and this one I popped up with a little frame on it. And I'm going to make another one like that. I used the Zany Zoo on this one. Um, and these, let's see, I die cut some trees. These were just fussy cut out of the paper. And then on the back, I have a happy birthday. And um, I stamped and colored in this guy, Ninfa. Okay, thank you, I was right. Um, I stamped and colored in and die cut him. And so I have the same frame on the back, but I didn't pop it up on the back. I didn't want it to be um, too thick, but I did pop it up on the front. So we're gonna make another one like that. This one, I'm going to use some stamps and dies and things from the Queen Bee stamp set. I really like this one. Hello, Margaret from Michigan. Hi, Melanie. Um, so what you need to make this card is a regular piece of cardstock that is um, four and a quarter by 11. And I scored it at five and a half and I folded it in half. I have two pieces that I'm going to cut this frame out of. One frame for the front and one frame for the back. And I'm gonna use this um, deckled rectangle. This is the fourth one, <clears throat> fourth largest one. And I already did one of these, but I'll go do this one on my big shot in a second. These are um, three and three quarters by five. And then these pieces of white are just a little bit smaller because I didn't want anything to show or to hang out. Uh, so instead of three and three quarters by five, it's three and five eighths by four and seven eighths. And this one I've embossed with the um, exposed brick 3D embossing folder. I really like that. All right, so I'm going to um, keep talking to you and I'm just going to step over here. I think you can still see me a little bit and I'm going to run this through my stamp and cut and emboss machine. It wiggles my table too much when I put it on the table. I guess I'm a very vigorous die cutter. Okay, 
So I'll save that for something else. All right. So the first thing that we're going to do is get this ready. Now I can't remember which way. Let me see if I can figure out if there's a right side up or an upside down. I think it goes like this. Okay. So first I'm going to put that on. I'm missing a piece of paper. I just noticed. I'll, um, we're going to make the little piece that makes it into the fun fold in just a second. So I'm just going to glue this on here. And I like the glue for the embossed pieces. Hi, Deb. Um, I think it holds those really well. It gets in the nooks and crannies. Okay, and now on the back of this, I am going to use, if I can find them, some foam adhesive strips. I also need my scissors that are buried under here. Here they are. I like using these rather than um, dimensionals because I can get better coverage. So I'm going to put it a little bit away from the edge. I'm not going right along the edge. I'm coming in just a little bit. I don't want it to be seen from the inside, but I don't want it to be seen from the outside either. And I don't like when it sags. So this gives you really good coverage. I'm just going to use a couple of pieces right here. Oh, that's too big. Okay. And we'll just peel these off. I like these adhesive uh, strips a lot for this kind of a thing. It gives you really good coverage. Okay, making sure my card is opening the right way. I'm going to start, I don't want to have to wiggle this too much, so I'm going to start at the bottom, making sure that I'm centered on the white and going straight up from there. There we go. So that looks good. I don't see my white and I don't see my foam strips. Okay, so from this queen bee, I stamped this image and then die cut it. And I'm just gonna do a little bit of coloring with my Daffodil Delight blends. I'm gonna use the light one on these flowers. Gotta give them a little color. I'm going to use my other end. There we go. You can press a little bit harder and go a little faster with the bullet tip. The brush tip is very, very soft. Okay, and then the buds, the ones that aren't open yet, um, I'm going to do in the darker color. So the fatter line means the brush tip and the skinnier line on that means the bullet tip. Hi, Jean. How is Florida? Oops, I missed a flower, so I'll go back and get that one in a second. But just doing these a little bit darker. And then I was wondering about doing some of the leaves just to add a bit of granny apple green just for just a little more color. The leaves are almost solid, so there's not a lot. Oh, 
I missed a couple of buds. Go back and get those with the darker one. One there, and one there. Okay. So that just adds a little bit of color. And I'm going to put that over here. Okay, so I'm going to use a little bit of glue on this part, but I'll need a little bit of a foam adhesive strip right up in here. And it's not the best idea to mix foam adhesive strips and dimensionals. They're really not um, the same width or height or whatever. So um, this is on a foam adhesive strip, so I'll want this on the foam adhesive strip at the same time. And then I put a little bit of glue on that side. Oh, good. I'm glad to hear you're happy with your move. And then I stamped and die cut three little bees from the same set. And they have a little flower on them. So I'm using my dark daffodil delight to just color in that little flower. Oops. Oops, stuck to me. And then we'll see where I'm going to put these. So what do you think? Should that be popped up on there? Or is down flat? Okay. I'm not going to put them on just yet. I have a Hooray, It's Your Day sentiment. I think I'll put it over here. I don't want to cover that up. And so I cut, this is from um, Irresistible Blooms. And I cut these out with two of the deckled circles. There's so many deckled circles, you'll find you have them in whatever size you need. And I'm going to do the same thing with a piece of the foam strip here. Put some up here like that. And I had a real little one, didn't I? I guess I used that already. Trim off another one. Okay, and then a little bit right there. I like that. It feels firm. Now this is this is caving in a little bit on me. I'm going to see if I can do a little surgery. Hi Jackie. Thanks Melanie. I love the bees. See if I can get this under there where it will not be seen. There we go. Good. I'm getting fussy now. I'm going to do one more little piece under that flower. I don't like, I don't like them to sag. No saggy middles. Okay. So what do you think here? I'm going to put one of these right on the frame. I wonder if I should pop them up or put them on flat. And I think I'll put one here. I think I will pop this one up. Oops. That might be too big. I think it's just a tad too big. They're all going the same way. I wish there was one that went the other way. I will show you this other cute little bee that they have. I, I thought about using this one 
but I decided not to, but they have a little die cut bee as well. I did black and yellow. Oh, good, Deb. I did put one on a strip. Okay, so that goes right there. I could always put this one on the back. We'll see. So now I want to make sure that the sentiment I have in mind is going to fit. And, oh, it's this one. It's the Happy Birthday from Artistically Inked stamp set. Let's see. I don't know if that is going to fit. I don't think it is. All right, I think we'll use the happy and the birthday from this one. It's not my favorite because the happy is bigger than the birthday. And I don't know why, but we're gonna use it. I'm gonna do it separately. All right, so sometimes I use my grid paper to line up the stamp on my block. I make sure my block is square. And now I'm trying to get the bottom of the letters even on the line I see through the block. Okay. I'm going to have to pull this down a little bit. I want to get that straight. And then I want that straight. Okay. So happy. Came out nice and dark. I like that. And now birthday. There we go. Okay, let me just put this stamp back so I don't lose it. You know what happens. Okay. And let's put this on the back. So I'm going to do the same thing. And I don't think this will be too hard to write on afterwards. I could write on it first, but I'm going to wait and write on it afterwards. And now this one, like I did on the others, I'm going to go flat on this one. This does fit nicely in an envelope. I don't want it to be so thick that it needs lots of extra postage. Okay. Now where did that other little B go? What do you think? Should I add a little B? Or maybe down here? I think I'll put it down on the bottom. With just a little There you go. Oh, and I do want to put some dots on this. I'm going to put a couple of the classic matte dots. I think I'll use the black. Oh, good. Ninfa likes the bee. I did the right thing. Put one there. I'll get a little bigger one. Maybe right there. And then we'll put one over here. So there we have some dots on there. And let me show you how we do the part that makes it stand better. So 
when you make a card like this, sometimes after a while, it just kind of goes and it starts to sag. And I don't like that. So this will prevent it from doing that. So the magic part of this is a piece of cardstock. I use the same color as my card base. And um, this is four and a quarter by three and a quarter. And it's four and a quarter because that's the same as my card base. And I want it to be the same width as my card base, okay? But on the shorter side, on the three and a quarter side, we're gonna score it a few times. So we're going to score it at three eighths of an inch, three eighths, one and five eighths, which is half of three and a quarter. I'm doing this on the wrong side. Okay, that's why that wasn't looking like it was in the middle. We want to go this way. Three eighths. Those those score lines won't. Wait, 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 wait. Yes, yes, I do. I want to go this way. Three eighths one and five eighths so that's half yeah that looks better and then two and seven eighths okay so ignore ignore that other little line at the top we're going to fold it in half and burnish it and then we're just going to fold those little folds back to the outside so that you have a little mountain or a W or can you see that? A witch's hat, whatever you want to call that. So now let me give that. I'm going to put some tear and tape along that folded back edge because we want this to stay nice and snug, nice and tight. Okay. And before I take the tape off, I'll show you what I'm going to do with this. All right. I am going to basically, whoops, put this in this this will be sticky and I'm going to put it right in almost up to the edge. It doesn't have to be exactly at the edge and then the top one down so that it will be sandwiched in there. I like to use my trimmer to help me keep that all straight. Okay. It's a little bit tricky when the, um, piece is popped up and so fat, but I'm going to take this release paper off and then I'm going to get this right in that, well, I didn't get it right, right in that corner there. And it's not quite to the bottom because I don't want it to peek out. I'd rather have it up an eighth of an inch or a quarter of an inch than have it peek out. So now I just close this one and it will be right where it needs to be. And I can give it a little rub with my bone folder. And I'll show you how it is. So there it is. It stands up beautifully and it has that little tent piece inside whoops there you go that you can see so it's a really fun card i think it's great for like a baby card or a kid's birthday where um they display the cards maybe your grandmother um displays the cards or your mother you know we used to put them on the mantle or on the sideboard. Um, so it's really very handy for that. 
It also is a great card that you could add um, the little calendar to the bottom, you know, that you would rip off each month, but have it stand up on your desk. It's a great card base for that also. So there are the three that I made, and then you have the back decorated as well. I really like the idea of the frame on this. So I hope you will give it a try. Let me know if you have any questions or you need any additional measurements. I'd be happy to help. Um, and thank you for commenting, liking the video, sharing the video. That all helps me to reach more people. Oh, I could do this. Uh, helps me to reach more people and share the love of card making with more people. So have a great rest of your Monday night. I hope you get some nice fall weather this week and happy card making. Bye-bye.